morning, everyone. Welcome to Church of the Messiah. What a glorious morning. It's so wonderful to see you all. We gathered this morning to celebrate the third Sunday after Pentecost, and we'll begin this service with a musical prelude played by Joyce Derry. We're so glad to see you this morning, and thank you for joining. Imaginative God, creator of all that is, inspire us who are overwhelmed by the complexities of life. Send through us the great rushing wind of your spirit to stir our hopes and breathe into us new life. Rekindle in us the flame of your spirit that with energy and enthusiasm, we may rise to meet the challenges of our work to bring heaven on earth today and every day of our lives. Amen.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Responsive reading from Psalm 92. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To tell of your loving kindness early in the morning and of your faithfulness in the night season. On the psaltery and on the lyre and to the melody of the harp. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent. That they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock in whom there is no fault. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away, See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will, be, will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it's sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and put forth large branches, so that the birds of the earth can make nest in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy are yours from the triune God. Amen. Every Sunday, you and I and Christians all over the world and down through the ages have prayed these words. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We imagine those we love who have passed away to be present in heaven right now. And in the Lord's Prayer, you and I pray that this perfect place find its way someday and somehow in this world, not at the end of time, but at some point in human history. I don't know exactly what images heaven conjures for you, but I think that we have been taught or invited to imagine heaven as a utopian place, a state where, as the writer from the book of Revelation puts it, mourning and crying and pain will be no more. But that is not our world. And that wasn't the world that Jesus lived in when he taught his disciples this prayer and shared parable after parable about the kingdom of heaven. Utopia, after all, is Greek for no place, an idealized city that has no material reality, just the yearnings of human imagination. Every morning, Jesus woke up not to the signs of God's reign on earth, but rather the insignias of Roman conquest and occupation. Every day during his ministry, Jesus traversed Galilee and witnessed the desperation and despair of sick and outcast people, the violence and oppression of imperial rule, the greed and callousness of the rich over the poor. Not heaven on earth, but the earth as first century Palestine was, a hard place where signs of God's reign seem to be hard to find. So it was then, so it is now. Even amidst the beauty of a Southern California late spring, all you need to do is to go into any ER in any hospital and spend an hour there. Visit a homeless encamp encampment along our local freeways or volunteer at a food bank to know that if heaven is that place of no more mourning or crying or pain, we are as far from that place as the people of Galilee were when Jesus told them this parable about the kingdom of heaven. So as he walked among the people of Galilee, 
those who came to him begging to relieve their loved ones suffering from debilitating physical and mental illness or disability, those who yearned to see God dwelling in a place that felt so God forsaken and Rome triumphant. Jesus looked around him to glimpse this place called heaven, what it might look like on earth. And in his line of sight, Jesus saw farmers and shrubs, fisher people and vineyards. He saw seeds scattered amongst thorns, on rocks, on rich black soil. He saw dirt encrusted fingers and birds roosting on dry branches and fish hauled into boats. And in a burst of illumination, Jesus glimpsed the kingdom of heaven not in the triumphant form of imperial marches, not with the blare of brass and the beat of drums, but in the slow, unfolding, softening, and breaking of hearts amidst the hard things of daily life. The kingdom of heaven is hidden, small, whispers, and Jesus invites his followers you and me, to train our senses, physical and spiritual, and to pay attention to where and how the kingdom of heaven enters our lives. The kingdom of heaven is seeds planted that sprout in the nighttime. It is a mustard seed that grows into an unwieldy, unkempt plant that gives quarter to birds. The kingdom of heaven is two dozen people standing on a corner in Irvine and enduring taunts and racist language to protest the bombing of Gaza. The kingdom of heaven is the teenager entering the residential mental health facility in hope that she can finally shake off this unbearable depression. Throughout this whole time of pandemic, the kingdom of heaven is nurses and chaplains setting up iPads and sealed ICU units so that loved ones could at least say goodbye over FaceTime, see each other virtually one last time. The kingdom of heaven is people placing and taking care of potted plants at George Floyd Square in Minneapolis at the place where his body lay. The kingdom of heaven is a trans kid insisting that family and friends and strangers you, they use they, them pronouns to authentically identify them. The kingdom of heaven is gay bars reopening all over the country, LGBTQ persons stepping into those bars for the first time after 16 months, stepping into those bars five years after the Pulse nightclub shooting in Florida because they insist on being their true selves. The kingdom of heaven is your dog, your cat nestling their warm body beside you to give you warmth in the evening when you have just had it for the day. I could go on. I hope you can too. And the kingdom of heaven is a group of people we used to gather in a small red church in Santa Ana, California, scattered in a digital diaspora, gathering and hugging and holding on to one another tonight at the auction for the first time in 16 months. After days and weeks and months of waiting, cloistered for your safety and other safety while watching the world through rectangle screens, we meet face to face and eat and drink and party like it's 1999. And in doing so, you and I glimpse something of the technicolor of the kingdom of heaven, a moment and a feeling as refreshing as gathering in the shade of a large mustard plant. And in the coolness of the tree and the warmth of the faces we can touch again, we feel ever more tangibly this thing that Jesus called the kingdom of heaven and glimpse what it feels 
like for it to be present on this earth. Pay attention, people of Messiah. The kingdom of heaven is closer than you think. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. Loving God, mercifully accept our prayers and draw us into the energy of your being. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the confusions and stresses of daily life, help us to hear your voice, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dissolve the barriers of suspicion that divide us from one another and help us to reflect your justice and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble and deliver them from their distress. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world to be committed to justice and peace on the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those in our community who have asked for prayers. Remembering especially Ki Chin Lee, Douglas Sheridan, Victoria and Katie, Esther Hernandez and Tyler Hudson. We continue to pray for those named in the ongoing prayer list and for those we hold in our hearts. The parish is invited to offer additional petitions and thanksgivings either silently or out loud. God hears them all. O oh God, you made us in your image and created us in love. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which contaminate our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us and guide us to work through our struggles and confusions to accomplish your purposes on earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus says, peace I live with you, my peace I give to you. Let us therefore greet one another in the name of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Now in the language of our choice, we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And the blessing of God, our creator, our redeemer and sustainer be with you, those you love and everyone you encounter this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. So good to see you. I am feeling so grateful and joyful this morning. Uh, and a big deal of that is about seeing you gathering here today. And uh, we have some birthdays and anniversary there on the screen so you can see it and be able to congratulate the people later on. Um, let's wait a second until Father Jim removed the, the liturgy. Um, now we can see each other closer. I, I want to thank on behalf of all of us, uh, uh, Dr. David Sheridan for such good liturgical taste in selecting the music. Uh, not only about this Sunday, but if you keep track of what he's doing, as I do, <laughs> uh, he brings a lot of diversity into the music and, and keeping up with our Anglican tradition, but also with our multicultural world in which we live and that we celebrate and embrace. So I'm deeply grateful to that. 
And Father Jim, thank you on behalf of our congregation for your wonderful sermon today. It was very spiritual and moving and I'm deeply grateful for that. And what to say about the music by Joyce and Sarah. Oh God, I went to heaven when I was listening to them. Isn't that true? This is great. There is a lot of people here involved to make Sunday Zoom happen. And on behalf of our congregation, Thank you to all of you readers, uh, uh, Murray, thank you so much for participating. We seems like we are moving in the direction of uh, soon, even though we don't know the specific day yet, in which we will be able to gather in person and worship. And, and uh, so I'm looking at soon now with a little bit of nostalgia, but I know that we're also going to keep it because this has been a great tool for people to connect and, and, and for those who have challenges coming to the church, it will continue to be a great tool for them to, to stay connected with us. But we will talk more about that. Uh, uh, as a reminder, today in the afternoon, some of you will be able to join us at this. Uh, let me find the best way to describe it. Uh, and I think it's the, in the prelude that Joyce Derry played today is called, and those, Jack Mile is there, if my Latin is correct, let me know. If it's not, let me know as well. It's called uh, O Sacrum Convivium, which I would translate as O Sacred Gathering. Is that close enough, uh, Jack? That's fine. It's or a big party. <laughs> All right. And so when I'm thinking about what we'll be doing this evening at the uh, annual auction at the Bowers Museum, I could think of nothing else but that sacred moment in which we gather. So we will, we will be rejoicing. This is the first gathering in person that we will have after so many, uh, not many years, so many days and it will be joyful to see you all this afternoon and those who are not able to join us this time please know that i tell you you will feel our love at some point at some moment we're so glad that you will be participating so i'm going to take us to the breakout groups and uh, the question that we have to you is pretty much in alignment with the sermon that uh, father jim preached today and the question is what the kingdom of heaven looks like to you so we're going to go into breakout groups and we will regather for a goodbye after a few minutes chatting with each other